In the 1600s, Russia became a great empire that spread from Eastern Europe across Asia to the Pacific. Defeat in the Russo-Japanese War led to revolution in 1905, and some reforms were made by the Romanov ruler Nicholas II that kept people happy enough. But the devastation inflicted during the battles of World War I led to such widespread rioting that it caused the end of the 300-year-old dynasty. This video and the subsequent videos will explore further the causes and effects of the Russian Revolution. By 1915, World War I is already causing horrific losses for the Russian troops. Two million soldiers are victims, there are food shortages, and since the Tsar is the autocratic leader, he is the one that everybody turns to uh, for, you know, to, to criticize. There was a legislator, legislature that had been set up after the 1905 revolution, but the Tsar has rarely taken their advice. And so people are going to blame the Tsar and they're going to look for, to the Tsar for solutions to this devastation that's happening in the war. His response is to go to the front lines himself and to be the hands-on leader and to lead the troops hoping that this will boost morale. The consequence of that, however, is that his wife, Alexandra, is left in charge. Now, she is actually a granddaughter of Queen Victoria, but also a Russian princess. And so she's incredibly conflicted in making decisions concerning this war that's happening between her adopted homeland, Russia, and the land of her birth, Germany. And so she relies upon the advice of a character named Rasputin. Now Rasputin was considered by the holy, by the royal family rather, to be a holy man and a healer. Their son, their only son, they had four daughters and one, one male heir. Okay, this 300 year old dynasty and its future was resting on their son Alexei, who happened to have hemophilia, which is a blood disorder inherited um, in th you know through the mother's genes. And in the case of, of hemophilia, what we know today is that it's an inability for the blood to clot. So you know that when you get a cut, eventually there's chemical reactions that happen in your blood that cause it to sort of thicken in that area, and the blood is slowed down enough so that the wound can heal. This little boy didn't have that ability because of the hemophilia, and so if he ever you know, fell, as boys do when they're playing, and got a bump or got a bruise, that, um, that bleeding would spread and spread and spread and spread and continue. It would be very difficult to stop the bleeding and the, the risk was that he would bleed to death. Rasputin would come in and sort of pray over the boy and in reality he just sort of calmed him down and calmed his heart rate down so that the bleeding would, you know, his heart would, would be beating so slowly that the bleeding would be able to stop. So it's a form of hypnosis. But they didn't know that. They just knew that their son was bleeding out of control and Rasputin would come in and calm him down and he would be fine. And so the Tsar and Tsarina tended to do whatever he, he wanted, um, which probably would be fine, except if you take a look at, and here's, uh, here's Nicholas and here's the little boy Alexander, Rasputin pictured here was a very shady character. He was, you know, drunk all the time. He consorted with all sorts of, you know, unsavory women and savory women too. But, you know, he was really kind of sketchy, very lewd, very crude, and it caused a lot of controversy because the reputation that, you know, what the people knew is not that the boy had hemophilia, but that this, you know, unsavory character was, um, you know, holding influence over the Tsar and Tsarina, and people didn't understand that. Ultimately, he was killed by the Tsar's nephew.